This is nothing to do with the work of the Keshe Foundation as teaching. This is to do how the Keshe Foundation was born, the truth about the Keshe Foundation, and how our foundation, which is yours, has been abused and misused. This morning, we heard from Mr. Amini that he received a telephone call from what we call terrorists of internet, Suzanne, that she wants to destroy because these people are committed, and sending emails to the others to give their pictures to. You see, this is a pattern. We're going to establish a pattern. The import most important thing is establishing a pattern, then you understand the work of these people. We don't accuse, we don't make accusation. We deliver solid information, and this is it. We might run for an hour or two, but it's important. There is a lot of things, facts about the Cash Foundation, facts about empty cash. The facts about empty cash is as follows. I was born in Iran in a normal family. My father was part of the Philips International Siemens in X-rays, and I was introduced to the world of medicine from a very young age in going around with my father to the hospitals when they were commissioned to be delivered and everything else. So I've been born around the radiation from the day I opened my eyes to it. I'm born and bred through the field of X-rays, gamma rays, MRIs, and everything else. At the age of eight, nine, when I was watching around about 10 years, man trying to go to the moon, things did not make sense to me. So many times I watched and I thought this is not the way to go to the moon. I remember summertime like now in July, watching the moon because I knew a couple of us have managed to make it in a little box in a capsule from Apollo to go to the moon. I always had a dream and I could understand the work of the radiation and I thought there is another way to do it. When I was with my father, one day I lay under the x-ray machine and my father said, this thing is going to go through. I said, if it can go through all that table and cherry goes through me, it has a different meaning. It has to be different. I spent all my time, my life in a very conservative way, in a very open way, developing, understanding more and more about cosmos. By the age of 12, 13, I knew I want to understand more about the work of the universe. The only passage through it was through nuclear industry. Age of 15, I 16, I came to England. By age of 22, I graduated from Queen Mary College as a nuclear engineer, specialized in reactor technology. When I went to university for the interview, I explained to my professor that why I won the seat. At that time, it was very difficult to get into universities to become nuclear engineers and physicists. There was a huge competition. 13 people, 14 people a year were educated by the university. I was the only one every few years that would train as a reactor controller. I was under supervision of Dr. Shaw, one of the most well-known, most of the nuclear reactor controllers in England went through his hand because he had his own nuclear reactor in the university, in the basement of Queen Mary College, then they moved it somewhere else nearby. He trained me well, but he understood I was not happy with my education because this was not answering my questions to him. He said to me, Mehran, they had a meeting with other professors, you get your degree, walk out and prove what you're talking about. I walked out. 1981, they just got me through my degree because I didn't even want to finish my degree. They convinced me, we get you through. You got through, you got your exams, your knowledge is beyond what we understand, but sit for two papers or three papers that you get the enough mark over three years and you get your degree. I agreed. I came out of university. It was impossible to carry on and do the work where, in a way, you knew you cannot work in a society, in a government a structure where you are working. In my education time, 
I work for British Nuclear Fuel by recommendation and insertion of Queen Mary College in one of the most secret sites in, Bel in uh, English nuclear industry. I worked in the cow shed. You hear it in the stories, I worked in it. After about eight months coming in as a fresh boy, I was given an individual office because I understood too much. But I would not accept signing secret official act of the British government. I was asked two choices. You stay, you sign, or you leave. I took the leave because there should be no secrecy in the knowledge. I stood for my ethos. Knowledge has to be free. In that time, I was told by the British intelligence, when I leave the nuclear industry, the way I understood it, I will never get a job anywhere in nuclear industry unless I work for British government the way I was working. I refused. So I entered private business. I ran a multinational offices in Africa, in Asia, in Europe, individually without support from anyone. I built a very wealthy structure for myself, having the intelligence, but working very little, spending a lot of time on research. I have letters which shows in 1985, 14th of June 1985, I have a letter from NASA, which confirms the receipts of the new space technology not using fuel. Confirming they received it, they are considering it. In that process, I carried on with my development because there was something not correct in the whole structure. How come we don't understand the gravity? I've drawn, designed many reactors, being trained to design reactors. That's why you see in this lab, physical reactors, nothing is theoretical. I built most of these reactors with my own hand. And then it came to the point in early 2000, I could see the gravitational field. It was so simple and why we were looking so far away from it. I went in 2002, 2001, 2002, I went back to British nuclear fuel. I asked, I want a centrifuge and I want access to nuclear material as a nuclear physicist is my right. Being a British resident in 2003, 2004, we came to an agreement to meet and I met at the military museum in Manchester in a very small office, four or five people. We couldn't even fit the chairs in. And I said to the officer from the British nuclear, why are we here in a military museum where BNFL, I know the headquarters, I used to work there. He said, no, this has to be discussed here. I was puzzled. Immediately, the gentleman in the room introduced himself to me. He said, Mehran, we've been waiting for you for 20 years. We knew you'd come back. Welcome home. I said, there is no home. I signed a confidential agreement with the Minister of Defense, not Ministry of Defense. It was considered so high, high level that could not be leaked to the ministry that the gravity has been discovered. In that process, with British nuclear, I will not move my technology into military, but British defense technology needed the technology because it, was, it would have been an upper hand worldwide if you could deliver system with gravity. We negotiated. I was not happy because I wanted a guarantee from British structure. I knew MI5 very well. I knew MI6 very well because in my business part, I collaborated with MI5 and MI6 in a couple of world peace actions. And then I realized later on how they allowed me to be so open and work with the security services in my business life. They were watching me, they were part of me, they knew I'm working because they could see my communication on a regular basis with NASA. They could see I'm constantly are talking to NASA. So they made it comfortable for me to become extremely rich working through the British structure as a farmer for different applications in security and disposal of all sorts of illegal materials which British government confiscated and they were destroying it 
and I show them why you will turn the wealth of a nation, let's use it, and we made it into a multi-billion organization for the British government. At that point, I was not prepared to work for Ministry of Defense. I said, I want guarantees that my knowledge will be used for peaceful application. In that process, they invited me to impress me to what is known as a Farnborough Fair. Farnborough Show, there is one in Paris and one in Farnborough. Alternatively, every year, military aircrafts are shown in each city and huge contracts, aircrafts, military hardware is sold on board. The first two, three days of this show is closed to public, which means it's only for ministers, presidents, and the rest to come to buy arms. I received a call from Ministry of Defense, from the guy we call, they call it usually a handler, the person who's responsible for my work. He said, Mehran, we are inviting you to Farmro. I said, I don't want, I don't need to go to Farmro. He says, no, come in, you see, you see, you open your eyes in what can be done. I went to Farmro with my wife. In Farmro, something strange happened. I went in, I'm a simple businessman, to me everybody is talkable. I walked into a building, huge building. The building belonged to Lockheed Martin. I didn't know, to me everybody was there, it's a show. I've been to many shows, 10, 20 a year. You walk to anybody, you can talk to anybody. I walked to this reception, I said, I would like to discuss the matter of development of the new technology, which the missiles become useless. The lady said, wait for me, I'm coming back, I have to bring somebody for you. I waited, a man, a very short man came. I explained to him, I have a technology I would like to discuss, I'm talking to the Ministry of Defense here, and would like to know if we can collaborate to develop it further. He said, come back at 12 o'clock. I said, no problem. I went for a walk, looking everywhere else, came back at 12 o'clock, keeping my appointment. There was nobody in the building and nobody around the building. The whole place was empty. As the door was open, I walked in. I started looking, they were showing the latest aircrafts, F-18s taking vertically up. A man touched me on my shoulder, says, Mr. Kesh, I said, yes. He said, would you like to walk on the other side of the glass? This side is American territory. The other side of the glass is a British territory. We want to speak to you, two of them. I said, I have nothing to talk. He showed me a car, MI5, and the other guy, MI6, British Secret Service. I said, what's the problem? No, we can't speak. You have to walk outside on the balcony. If you go to Farnborough, you know the building very well. When we walked outside, he told me, Mr. Kesh, you are under arrest for selling intellectual right. I said, what intellectual right? He said, you are offering Americans uh, information and technology which belongs to Britain. I said, bullshit. I'm Iranian. My technology belongs to my government. And secondly, I'm working with the British to develop peaceful application. The discussion goes on. They cornered me in the wrong corner of the balcony and... At that moment, I having my mobile phone in my hand, I called my handler, who is literally the first man to Minister of Defense, his right hand man, I said, you set me up. He said, no. I said, you brought me here to put me down as somebody who's selling information, which is my own technology, you don't even know what's inside it, and then now you are forcing me with this. He said, this is a mistake, Mehran. I said, listen, if it's a mistake, there are four or five black cars, there is loads of police, the whole area is cleaned up as I'm a terrorist. I'm walking out, you will not get anything from me. There was a conversation with the other two guys on their mobile. This carried on for about 20 minutes and I'm shouting on top of my head, literally telling whatever I like to my handler on the Ministry of Defense, the right hand man of the minister. That moment, the talk with MF6 was, with MI5, boys, I can hear the voice of a woman, head of MI5, MI6, talking to these guys, we have made a mistake, back off. I said, you made a mistake, not me. They said, they know him, the Ministry of Defense, talking to MI5, MI6, he is one of us, let him go, you made a mistake. At that time, 
the situation was out of control because there was so much going on. They wanted a guarantee from me that I will not take my technology to Iran. I said, I don't give you any guarantee. I'm an Iranian citizen and I'm a citizen of Britain, but I carry a nationality of Iranian. They refused to let me go on the balcony till they get a guarantee from me that I will not go to Iran. I said, there is no guarantees. I walk out of this platform, I'm straight into Iran. You made a huge mistake. At this moment, it got too confusing. MI5, MI6, literally shitting in their pants, they're gonna lose a scientist. They said, okay, it's a mistake. Please, let's talk, everything is okay. Go back to Manchester. Officers will talk to you. We can sort it out, you can speak to the Americans. Everything suddenly, the cars disappeared, people start moving, the police disappeared. If you go into the Lockheed Martin in Farnborough, this is the balcony. They have a door which has got a cover in front of it, a swing door. They said you can talk to the Americans. I came here, stood here with Caroline. The both side were locked by FBI, CIA agents, whoever they were. The short man appeared. He said, Mr. Cash, go back home to Manchester. Within 48 hours, we call you from Washington. We are prepared to negotiate the Lockheed Martin for development of the technology. Do not stay here, walk out. We agreed with the British. So I knew the technology is shared now. Whatever I give them, they share it. I said, you know, guys, I'm going home. I'm not dealing with anything. I kept the technology for myself. I develop it. One day I use it. There was a lot of discussion, a lot of apologies. I walked back. This position of Lockheed Martin is more or less at one end of the runway. And those of you who've been to Farm Road, then you know it. The entrance is here. This is about two or three kilometers. You walk the whole length of the runway. Caroline joined me later on because she was with our children at the hotel. She, had a, she was given to a wife of a scientist clearance to come into the most secret area of the British technology because they were showing it. That's how much they trusted us. I had a green pass visa pass. The same was given to Carolyn, to a wife of a scientist because they knew we are always together. When we were walking back, I said, Caroline, I wasted my life staying in Britain. I'm going back home. I'll take the technology to Iran. We are peaceful people. We develop it. She said, Mehran, let me talk. On the way, when I was coming back, I passed through a section. There is a Belgium section here. Let me speak to the Belgium. I said, no. I sat in a cafe at that bottom. Caroline said, I'm going to talk with them. When she went, she came back. They said, they want to talk with you. I said, no problem. I don't talk. I just listen. We walked back all the way, just before Lockheed Martin, Belgium Air Force show officers. They said to me, the ambassador from London has been called in. You can't talk to you till the ambassador arrives. Ambassador arrived in the hall. I sat the other side, the intermediary negotiated between Belgium ambassador and me. And they told us, if you come to Belgium, we talk, we give you everything. Your wife is Belgium. We give you everything you want in Belgium, will not be used for military application. The name of the gentleman is all over the internet, you know who he is, and we agreed. Carol and I, in September, moved back to Belgium because we already had a home in, the, in, the, in Belgium. We went back home from our home in England and met with this gentleman. This gentleman took us to VUB, University of Brussels. They said the scientists at VUB have to confirm the discovery. Seven months, every couple of weeks, they gave me more questions and I answered more, thinking I'm working within the frame of the structure. And then I was, all this was handled by a professor called Professor Van Overmeer, who used to be part of the head of the university. He said to me, Mehran, I'll give you a piece of advice. You have discovered this, the, the technology. They brought nuclear physicists to understand if it was random or I have discovered the gravity. They brought one of the most genius doctors I know, Dr. Deer, a lady who works for the British nuclear and the military side in England. They brought him to Belgium to sit and talk with me. It was a final decision. 
the appointment was made for an hour and a half. Within seven, 10 minutes, she got up, she said he's discovered the gravity, except all his technology. And then they said to me, they're gonna write a report. I waited around March. I said, we are, we are there already from September. I said to a co-professor, I said, Professor what happened to the report? He said, I can give you one page just for you to be, but the real report has been sent to the government. I received the report. Then I was, the people who brought me in, they said, you have to speak to such an office. I spoke to that such an office. Within two days after my, me receiving the papers from the Professor Van Omeni, I was told that a company has been set up to look after the development of technology. The Belgium, the biggest in space technology, you know the name. The name starts with V. We are not releasing any names to make any accusation that they come and they destroy our website the way Alan Sterling did. In a coming website, which is getting set up by Cash Foundation supporters, all these documents will be released that you can see step by step. When I met, they told me to the company, I sat for three months from March, April to June, July, we went through step-by-step -step design of the development of the first, what we call gravitational magnetical system. The scientists of the company, they sat every day, every two days we met, and at the end of the meeting, whatever was discussed, the past meeting which I've made note of, they signed, yes, this is the information transferred to us. So it was obvious how the information was transferred, the knowledge they didn't come to them. Very strange thing happened. Suddenly at the end when we came to discuss, they told me the Prince of Belgium is coming to the, fact, to the company, which is very unusual. Later on we found out, yes, they were trying to prove to the Belgium monarchy that they have found the system of gravitational system, the prince wanted to see it himself before approving. We agreed to sign a contract to develop the first gravitational magnetical system. To me, you've seen these reactors here at that time, should not be about 30, 40,000, maximum 80, 100,000 or so. I saw a figure of asking from the Belgian government, one point something million. I said, guys, what is going on? You're robbing your own nation? No, no, this is the way it's done. I said, I have a problem with this. I can't agree with it. But at this moment, we are negotiating. I was told, I went back to the same group which they brought me to the company. I said, I need a lawyer who can understand this contract because it's not correct in so many ways. I was sent by them to a so-called lawyer. We call him B. I walked into the, in Loven, into his office, about a shop, him and his secretary. He opened the door. The things which was going through my head did not add up because when I was with the We company, the always they said they have full control over the Belgian government, and they have a man inside which can do everything, and there was so much indication I could imagine the man. I worked with the soul. This secretary opened the door, Mr. B, introduce yourself. As he introduced himself, I said, I want to ask you a question before we start. I had the contract from the V company in my hand. I said, have you written this, com this contract? He said, maybe. I said, you know, it's illegal for you to sign a contract and negotiate with the other part to sign another contract? I said, we are walking out. This is a deception. You're acting criminal. He said, sit down. He start writing pieces of paper to Caroline with four names on. If Mr. Cash doesn't sign this contract, he'll be killed by these companies. Caroline looked at the paper. I looked at the paper. You don't want to know the name of the games. You tank in their petrol stations every day around the world. Petroleum groups and military groups. He told me, threatened me to be killed by four organizations. I said, you know something, Mr. B? 
I take a walk, you take a hike, you're a crook. You cannot write a deal, a contract, and then sit with the other side if I didn't know to negotiate. I know enough about international law. Later on, we find out that this Mr. B is a very key man in a lot of things which I'm going to explain. He is not a lawyer. He was disbarred for deception and crooked jobs by the Belgium courts. He could never stand as a lawyer. Even to today, he writes, he practices law, but he cannot be. He's, not, he's barred from everything. This man played a heavy game in the life of the Cash Foundation. Step by step, you'll understand. At this point, when I was in Belgium, we had friends, which we tried to find a way to bring this technology into open. Beautiful friends. Some of you know him. We call him Olivier. Another one. Another notary, well-known notary. Three of us, we start structuring around the Cash Foundation, the website and everything else. We call it Cash Technology. If you go on the website, you find it. Summer of next that time, Olivier was on holiday. He called me and said, Mehran, I have found a company which can do angel financing. I said, no problem. We go and see them. He came back from the holiday. We went to the angel finance. Angel finance, we call it E. You know the rest of it, or let's call it three, because it's part of whatever the structure is later on. We start negotiating with these people. Three people we met. Three directors of this company, angel company, belonging, working as the financial arm of a major narrow company. We call it C. So C is financing D and the three finances are known to anybody. He is the inner circle lawyer, so-called of B. This Mr. B was in the circle of the company of this. So this man sits across the border everywhere as a lawyer and he's not a lawyer, he's a criminal. And when a new technology appears, he decides how they're going to handle it, how they're going to share the benefit of the technology. In talking to C, in them testing the first parachute, what we call, I gave it to them. This is my parachute. The first time we knew. We are in the board. You see, these parachutes, they took one of these of us and they tested it. They said to me, it's impossible to produce nano layers to produce graphite and graphene without the radioactive material. We're going to call you a terrorist unless you give us the technology. I said, you take the hike. So Mr. B, not being able to get the technology for a second time, went with his connection with the heads of the nation, created a program called Cash Foundation is a terrorist organization because he's producing graphene and graphite, which all of you do with acoustic nowadays as a terrorism because they are a huge, one of the most advanced nanotechnologies. They spend millions on it. Now with a few cents is made. In our meeting, one of the three people, directors of three had three people. One of them said, I pay for a patent to be written. We already paid three and a half thousand euro. We have all the receipts for it to one of the top patent companies in Belgium to write. They took the money after two or three months. They told us this is so complicated. We have nobody. This is can we have our money back? No, we read your patent. We read your work. It's impossible to write. We keep the money. So the man who brought came to us, one of the directors of the three company. He said, I know one man who can write your patent. We said, no problem. But we have to see everything. Carol and I, we made 
three, four, six, and 12 seated table, dinner tables we had at home with all my paperwork, with all my research over years to prove the technology is correct. This man walks into my house, looks at everything, they see, they talk to each other, and then he says in Flemish, I don't understand, and then the man from here, we call it G. He said, we pay for the patent. And this gentleman we brought, we know, as a red circle now, will write you a patent. He was in my house, he saw everything. All my research was on the table because I thought I'm working with the trusted people. But now they knew they stole the technology with the work of what already was with the V company. But they couldn't see the key. So the pattern was, we'll get the right pattern for you, and then we'll get the information most probably they wanted. They paid for the pattern to be written in a way, Paul paying Peter, stealing from each other but working together. So this gentleman, what we call red circle now, has entered into the cycle of the Keshe Foundation. I introduced him to my other two people, highly beautiful people, perfect people, in the process. From then on, our problem grew and grew. Every time we attended a meeting, the thing went flat. We couldn't understand why. Every time I went to a meeting on my own, everything was perfect. The last minute, if he came in as advisor, everything, we, Caroline, we, for three, four years, we couldn't understand how. Till in 2008, I went to Iran. When I came back, we found more. But in that process, Red Circle introduced to us a number of people. He said, they're going to help to finance. They're going to help to build. They're going to help to do everything else. But in fact, in the present research shows, these are a bunch of pedophiles, murderers, and people who will steal intellectual rights. we show you the evidence in a few minutes. So what is the pattern now has become very clear. They have a man who every time a new science comes, pretending a pattern writer of, if you go on the internet, inflatable dildos, banana, whatever. How could this man, now we see, could write such a pattern? He was there to steal for the team. But strange enough, we saw more. Everything fell apart. Nothing was happening. They're putting us under so much pressure to become desperate to give everything. But I knew I will not give it because I knew when I come to a point, it's there to share with the world, I release it. At that moment, because of the pressures, my child was born, we wanted a passport or a birth certificate in my name, by Belgium law, if your child within 30 days is not registered in your name, he becomes the mother of the, the, the name of the mother. And then I had a whole thing to change his name. I went to the Iranian embassy, I said I need my birth certificate, which I lost when I left Iran, somewhere has been lost. And they said to me, come in, Mr. Cash, we've been waiting for you. Come to Iran, we developed the technology with you for peaceful application. And I said, no problem. I managed to get the birth certificate of my son issued in my name. This is what they did to us. This man is a murderer. If I tell you what we went through with Caroline in the hand of this terrorist. Then I said to Caroline, there is a problem. Every time we go anywhere, he finds out everything goes flat. I'm not prepared to discuss anything with him as I go to Iran. I went to Iran on a secure way Thanks to the Office of the Iranian President, I arrived, greeted as a scientist the way it should be done, looked after it, given laboratories, I developed the technology. My agreement was that I send money every month, 5,000 euro per month to my wife and my young boy that they can live. And they found out that the payment was came from Iran to KB Bank of Belgium. They stopped the money. And they told my wife, the only way you can receive money from Iran is if you sell food products. I said, Caroline, send me a sandwich. I'll send you 5,000. There is a receipt for the sandwich. This was, again, the job of Red. 
They found out I'm there. He made a lot of threats against us. He made a lot of jobs with us. A wife and a child with no income, with no money to pressurize. Thanks to what we had, I came back from Iran. He put us under such a pressure. I said, Karan, you have to tell Dirk because more or less they are making us, I have to come back. I cannot support you from Tehran. They don't let any money come here. And I'm not sending any black money through the borders. He came to pick me from Paris because now he knew I'm there. But you have to understand, he's the agent of the master. He was punished for not knowing where a top scientist, which was under his surveillance, has disappeared to. When I came back from Iran in October, he said, why don't you write your things in a book, your knowledge? I help you to do it. I said, I'll do it in so many weeks. He said, impossible, six months. So I said, I'll write my book. So I already written part of it. He said, you come to me, we do it. Caroline refused to allow him in the house to do the book because we saw a lot of indecent activities regarding our son in the house before, like pissing in the garden in front of a two-year-old boy, showing your private parts to a boy, because now we understand more why. So we start working, writing the first book, opposite more or less in his house in Antwerp. I drive 100 kilometers to sit in the cafe to finish the book, to write the book, and more or less when the first book was finished, one day he said to me, I want to eat. I said, you're in the cafe. He says, no, no, I want to go to a very famous chain of hamburger shop, which is part of Belgium structure. I want to eat across the road there. I said, I can't eat. At that time, I already was fighting with a very bad liver and pain in the kidney. They said to me, you have suspected pancreas and liver cancer. So I couldn't eat anything as normal. And all this started when I came back from Iran with him. Start writing. Now I see the same pattern. The guy was poisoning me slowly, slowly on the table. Repetition, what John did to me in the Sansano. Very, very small dosage. You get to the peak that I couldn't walk. My students all know this. And then a big dosage to finish you off. We show you he's done this to three scientists. One is dead. We released the name today because it can be done. And then when we went to the hamburger, because the books were finished, the first book, they thought they got the key. They can understand it. I said, I can't eat. He bought one hamburger. If you're eating two people, you have to have two hamburgers, not one. He bought one hamburger. He says, I bought this for you. I said, I can't eat. I won't touch it. And he sat in front of me, I bought it for you. I said, I'm not touching it, I can't eat. I have a problem with my liver, such a thing destroys me. He ate the burger. I remember this clearly because I never had a discussion. I love hamburger. My children are addicts to it. I made them addicts to it. He walked out, he came back in and he said, I see flashes in my eyes. I said, why? He said, I see a lot of stars, he said. I said. I'm tired, I, I'm going home. In a way, he ate his own burger, not mine, because it was warm me and I wasn't prepared to eat it. He just wanted a coffee. That was his explanation when we went there, buy your sandwich. Later on, I found out that burger was poison. It was the last poison for me to eat to die. But he had to eat it because it was on the table. So he poisoned himself with his own hamburger. He bought me sitting on the table trying to finish the last words of the book. So that's how the next day he said to me, my hand is going paralyzed, I had a stroke. So the poison has caused his own stroke. That's how he had a stroke. Then he had to go to the hospital. He got in the hospital for days and we found out this was something, the guy had a stroke. He says, you know, I went under so much stress writing. No, darling, you ate your own bloody poison. That was the last piece I was to eat. This is how John gave me the poison over days in my teaching and a big dose at the end and he disappeared back to Belgium and have something to do. So it's a pattern the way he works. At that point, I carried on working and this goes on. Second and third book, again, he tries to poison me. I had one policy, 
I will not eat with him. I will not eat with him on the, in his house or allow him in my house. So it was a very remote. If you go to a restaurant, I watch what it touches, but nothing crosses my table. It was an instinct. There is a problem. We never told him. And then every now and then, he pushes the police to come and push us. They blew my car up with my sister in it. They high chase with a gun with the, organized by the police, everything around his house in Antwerp, and then coming to kill us with eight officers. Where Caroline was getting beaten up when I was on the phone. She was telling me they are beating me up. And I said, just let them in. There was no excuse for it. And then the whole process we saw with confiscation of the materials, leaving the active material with us, which was illegal to have. If it's illegal, why do you leave it in my lab? And everything else we saw. When they came and they beat Caroline up, we got into the car. We drove off to Italy. We had friends here, and they welcomed us, and now we're in Italy. Thank you very much, Mr. Giovanni. And we see in three, over three years in Italy, we have managed to get the knowledge across the world to millions of you. This is the facts about Mehran Tabakali Cash and the Cash Foundation. Now, you understand how they came to Italy, and then now he lost. He's the boss. We saw in the process of being in Belgium, he introduced to us, you have to be known. I brought you somebody, I've asked, he's contacted you, called your favorite guy, Alan Sterling. He brought Alan Sterling to give an interview to. I didn't know anything. It was good because it was for our publicity. We wanted to be known. I gave three or four interviews to Alan Sterling. And then it came all other problems with it. When we moved to Italy, they followed us, they poisoned us, as you all know. Again, a Belgian man like him, born in Congo, giving the same poison, but this time not only to me, but this time to my wife and my child too. We all three got poisoned. Even one of the students touched the poison. He was poisoned by it too. So we see we are dealing with a murderer. But what happened when we came to Belgium, something very strange happened. Mr. Red Circle, seeing that we've grown, now we opened the institute in Trani, take a flight to where we start commercializing, showing the technology works into Hong Kong, carrying with himself a patent that I'm gonna do, it's called Casimir patent, and patent the technology in China, because he knew in Europe he can't do it, he was trying to teach the Chinese. He's done the same thing with another technology in Australia, we show it to you in, it's, it's a pattern of his work. And unfortunately, the scientist in that is dead. He's a Dutch scientist, died, July 1999. They gave him the same poison and he died. So he, we have a murderer with us, Red Circle. And this is the reason why you see so much coming up, scandals, fraud, and everything else. Because when we opened the hand of Alan Sterling, he knew we know too much. We started fishing. My team, and the others start gathering a lot of information about Alan Sterling. And a lot of similarities with Red Circle came up. They knew we were onto him, and so he recruited all his agents, Suzanne, False Hope, and the other guy who came to the center, the black guy here to kill me, they're all his workers. He's the head of the biggest organization in murdering scientists. We show you one by one, you will understand. So, in this process, when by accident, one of our top Cash Foundation guy was in Hong Kong, seeing him there with a the patent, he took a copy, he came, says, Mehran, what is this? How come you're not patenting anything, but he can patent? I said, what? They were sure I'm going to be killed. So they did what they did to the other scientists. So they went to disturb the production in China, placed their own patent as being a friend, and so we kicked him out. 
very politely because we knew what he's up to. And he went with the rest of Alan Sterling and before that they knew through their own security that what we are doing, we found Alan Sterling is the head of a big pedophile and the boss is him. They start opening Cash Foundation, truth about the Cash Foundation, victims of Cash Foundation. We just heard from the most beautiful African man. He doesn't even know what Red Circle is. He doesn't even have a passport. He's never been out of his own city. And now they all became victims. Victims which never existed. This is the way they done. They can't get it, discredit it. And I'll show you he's done this with three people. One of the most reputable politician millionaires in Belgium was brought down by him 10 years before. So he's done this before. In that process, Mr. Red Circle now has no choice. He's got a, half, a million, we think, plus golden handshake for getting the information and getting a villa, or what do you call it, a penthouse in one of the most expensive places where he didn't have a pot to piss in because he had to hide the money where he was getting paid from the stolen technologies. So in this process, once we start getting Alan Sterling, he knew we were after it. Our team in the background worked very heavily. They are searching. We kept quiet. I kept very low. I asked the security services to open a lot of things to us about Alan Sterling as a team. Wherever we kick it, pops up Red Circle. His soldier interviews him, Madame Suzanne. His chief of command, Red Hope, False Hope, interview him to give credibility to themselves. They go out, putting every false information out. 650, you go every single 650 of Cash Foundation victims and click them. It's entered by Red Circle himself. Not by them, and it's just a face, just to build up the numbers. Because he didn't know, I set him up for it. In one of my talks, in my teachings, go back onto it, you'll find out. Where we got him now as a murderer is well planned. In one of my teachings, I said, ah, oh, the people have been looking for victims and they only can't find five and six or ten. We knew he started building the evidence. We had to show to the government he's a, he's a murderer. So he said now he's going to build up the evidence. So false, any names could come on the Facebook. We set him up and he walked into it. We waited till Alan Sterling comes in, the verdict. It came two weeks ago. Remember what I told you? In respect to Alan Sterling, I work very, I used to work in my business life close with the security services for the security of British government. Or business side, where we could work, sell goods which they didn't could sell to generate money for us and for the government. So I was in chit chat with them, learned a lot about security. And at the same time, being in nuclear physics in Russia and other places, I've been well trained in security and what we have to do to protect ourselves. I gave an interview to Kerry Cassidy. I spoke with the FBI. These are all registered. We registered all these calls, that there is no coincidences. The FBI officer in Utah told me, he called me originally in November. I called him in February and January. He says, Mehran, we got him. If we bring him in, we have to go through a very really expensive court case. If he walks in, we're done. We don't need to do anything. I said, leave it to me. I called Kerry Cassidy. I explained this before. I said, Kerry, I want to give an interview, but Alan Sterling is going to be discussed. She said, I can't let you, but if you like walk it through, I don't say anything. In that interview, I said on the 18th, 19th of February that we know who the victims of Alan Sterling are. They're his own children because these people rape their own children. And then he knew, we know, the cover is blown. They all need to do to arrest the children because now it was in the open. The next day he walked in Utah, sheriff office, handed himself, and the following day he was arrested for raping his two daughters. So we knew how to get to these people is the original victim, his daughters. We sent a message to his daughter. 
And immediately in past two or three days, we saw he's saying that they are, what do you call it? They're stalking my daughter, they are this and that. All we sent to him, he hasn't shown any of it. We took a, uh, what do you call it, a screenshot. We know what we sent. We sent a conviction of Alan Sterling and one of the scientists that he has murdered to his daughter. How your father is a crook and a murderer. So he knew, we know, we found the first scientist. We know that he's murdered. Now in past two or three days, Cash Foundation faxes. He's written this to my daughter. My daughter has written, I, my heart is with you. I love you and the rest of it. Because we send the information. We pinch the dog for the cat to meow. And the cow to meow. And he wrote it. So he walked into what we said, that they work as a team, father and daughters. We will show you more and more. These are the evidences on the internet. Then, now we know and now we can reveal. Red Circle is in the business of stealing technologies for his government and he gets paid very well. Very well. And then the payment is in two ways, partially cash and partially children. We know how he gets children for his bosses too. Now we have unraveled the whole lot, the way we did with Alan Sterling. He has raped his own two daughters first, sometime in the past. Age, the same as Alan Sterling, between three and six years. Children cannot remember anything between their three and six, but you have to remember, Red Circle advertises and is done according to himself, a lot of hypnotism. He says he has hypnotized 100 people in one go in Uyube, the university, where I gave my documents. I've been going to the nest of the bees where they were assessing my technology. And so he hypnotizes children. We have found out what he does with the children. He murders children. He, he literally beheads children. It's on the internet. We will release it. You will understand it, how he works. But the story goes long before I ever came into the scene. Security people from CIA, FBI, British intelligence and police, Interpol are all sitting on the line. They know. I told them I release it today. Give this to your government police. You'll find out how he works. What has happened is that the story goes long before murdering me. Long, long before. In 1990s and 1980s, a very well-known businessman who wrote a program how to create a new financial cycle, he made himself multimillionaire, became a pain in the backside of, and he wasn't prepared to share his wealth. He made hundreds of millions out of it. The backbone, the problem, programming again, remember the program? How to make money, and he went public with it, a lot of people to make money. They put him in prison for five years because he didn't share the loot. But they made a lot of accusation with him. Him, like me, being a correct man, he found that the people who are after him, they are linked to pedophile groups. He went to source of pedophiles in Holland. And in a shop, they gave him a video, how pedophiles do whatever they do with children. This is all on the internet. And then he watched it. He knew this is what they're going to do to him. He walked away, and he didn't talk. He went to prison, he came out of prison because they were trying to get his money. And then this gentleman in 2010, 11, 12, came to start a new political party. We call him R, because this is very important. And Red Circle has written how he worked with R, to set up a party. It's on his own website. We have taken all the pictures from it. But in fact, when he went back, I remember this day again because he was on the opening of the Cash Foundation. At about 11 o'clock, he was pushing, I have to leave, I have to go. I said, this is an opening. You've been, you've been supporter of foundation. You've done everything. But I have to go because R has a television interview. I have to be there. He left the meeting to go to an interview, where everybody in the cash foundation field there, you remember him leaving. 
Mr. R, why he wanted to be there and why he was put around him is that Mr. R watched the video and that's why he stopped everything. A girl being slaughtered, beaten up and murdered. The problem what it was here is that the murder is carried out by Red Circle. He wanted to make sure he can't remember it, and if he does anything, I discredit him. When most probably he realized, Mr. R has realized who he is, he did exactly the same as what he did to me. He went, opened a scam about Mr. R on the Belgian internet. Everything was wrong with him. This six sack copy of cash victims, truth about the facts. He's done this with this Mr. General R. He's a very well-known politician, businessman in Belgium. So what we know, the question was, how they bring the children in? How does he get access to the children? He uses his false identity that he has made jigsaws, flat jigsaws. It's not his. It belongs to a Japanese inventor and something else. But in the publication of his company with his daughter, they ask a very funny question. We want, we are looking for three to six year old children to photograph. You remember Suzanne asking for photograph? That's what they do. They send the photograph to children, and then if you like it, they kill it for you. This is what his job is. These are documents, CIA has full dossier. We have sent it to CIA. So him, and is on the Facebook of his daughter looking for three to six year old children. And people have responded to. We don't know how many children have gone missing. There is no location without taking pictures and what it is. But the enticement for taking a picture is a free movie ticket. Would you take your child to take a picture and send him to a free movie where in the movie and on the way home the child goes disappearing? They like it. Before the child gets to cinema, it's sold. Now you understand why we become a scam. Now you understand why there is so much effort by him to discredit the Cash Foundation and you lot. Now you understand how ruthless this man is, no life worth anything about it. But this doesn't finish here. You have to understand he is a, what we call a as he's got a movie on that, blowing vibrators, blowing dildos, that's his speciality. What has happened, it seems that his bosses decided sometimes in the past to use him because he has no understanding of what he was doing for pattern writing that they can bring children in and scientists in. In mid, late 1990s, a genius, a Dutch genius, wrote and developed a television man. The first video compression program. You know nowadays video compression worth billions. It made Bill Gates a multi-trillionaire. This program was written by this man in 1990s. Accidentally, the way the most probably he was there with his team working in the background. They poisoned the guy. The day before he signs a hundred million euro contract for his invention, he died strangely with a heart attack, stroke, nobody knows. He was, they would not even allow to do an autopsy. Remember, the judge in America who died recently, they never allowed autopsy because when they know they do autopsy, it shows how they kill. Would you like to read the name of the, or we better don't do because it goes on the site. Go on the internet, it's in Dutch news. July 1999. This compression technology, over 15 years ago, worth the trillions. The man has his hand on it. 
as a pattern writer with his team. His team, as we said, starts with A, which this A traveled with me to, China, to Korea to see what I give to Samsung to murder me. And he told me many times, they're going to kill me with the guns and everything, but that's what he was trying to tell me. I'm going to kill you if you give the technology to Samsung. Strange enough, very, very strange enough, this scientist murdered a man who writes patterns for what I call Mickey Mouse games, the toys. Now, in 2002, with his collaborator, which most probably they nobody knew, the secret of the murdered scientist who wrote the patent for compression was submitted to Belgium. Belgium Patent Office. So a dildo man become the writer of the most complicated compression technology ever existed. Go through the patent office of the Belgium in 2002. They waited a year or two till everything died. They already sold. The money took out by B, if you remember, he organized everything. They set up the most advanced nanotechnology finance and the other finance to trap scientists and everybody else. Now you see the circle is complete. The son of the king, who says he's the son of the king, introduced us to Red Circle. So they're all in it. They have their own lawyers, they have their own police force, everything is done at their will. So what happened in 2002, again, after murder of the scientists, this is all on the internet. Please go on the internet, rule for radio compression. The two fights that you, I worked five hours to finish the patent and you published, you submitted it the day before while I was traveling home. The two thieves, now they're fighting for their position. So he could not submit another patent, he did it in Belgium, for what his partner in crime was already submitting his name. The fight between these two guys goes for a long time. Have a look, go on the internet. We have all the documents. So in that process, they already killed the scientist. They took his patent and it's on the reading the documents that the key, the man like me, the, the, the guy in Holland, did not give the last two keys of the, the compression. So what they did, they stole it. It's a floppy disk which had a key on it, but they couldn't decipher it. So in that process, they already killed the man, and then they could not have or bring the money they stole by the murder. I'm a pattern writer. I write a fake pattern. We heard a lot about his patterns, where he made his money. The pattern doesn't belong to him. He just put something with a name in a, Europe, in a Belgian patent office to cover himself, and he started bringing some of the money which came from murder of the scientists with this pattern he was given by his bosses into operation. Because the patent, what he says he's done for the funny, whatever you call cubes, were written in 1988 by Japanese and by another, I think, Dutch. It didn't belong to him. He faked it like usual. Now he submitted another fake pattern to bring to laundry the money, who, which he was at to. At the same time, again, his bosses, Mr. B, came across another person like me who went to B. We went as usual. It's here, the nest. They went there to get finance. Here, Mr. B set him up. They got his box, black box. The black box was here, kept here at the head office. And one black box, they said, we want to see it creating energy. But strange enough, the man went through the same life as me with the liver cancer too. The last time he met him, he poisoned him to kill because he would not give the secret. 
If you're a Russian, please go into the documents of a girl, Russian girl, been shot and burned in a house in Mahlan area of Belgium. Mr. A, which is his collaborator, a Dutchman, we have submitted these to the court years, but we couldn't find out how we can get through because they're part of the structure. Mr. A and Mr. Red Circle, they said the same guy with energy system as me and poisoned him the same. This is the three scientists we know, me, the scientists in Belgium, we don't know because we are away, we don't know if he's alive or dead yet. You know him, I've shown the graph of, if you put this nanomaterial in water, it shows charges. That graph comes from this scientist. So we know who he is. He received exactly me. How come everybody receives liver cancer or that, which comes in touch with red circle? So he has murdered two scientists, a Russian girl, raped his own daughters, and the girl we've seen and many other girls. He is a head of the biggest criminal organization in the world. It is not the cube which is happy. The cube is the coffin of the children. That's why he sells them so easily, the pictures. The whole problem is that they are operating freely in Europe. Because now Mr. B sits at one of the highest position in European space organization. We've seen a lot of scientists in the past two or three years in Europe disappearing and dying. He organizes all of them. He owns 250 companies, which is all the latest patents. He threatens like me, if you don't give me take, and I met two or three people. But a strange of the strange, go to Australia. Look for compression companies set up in Australia. They could not decipher on the last load. They brought a young computer programmer trying to decipher. They thought they found part of it, in Europe, they couldn't do it because then it would have been a murder of the scientists in Holland will come up. They opened a compression company in Australia. It's still there. And his name is as a director of the company, major shareholder. Strange. A vibrator designer sitting on the most advanced compression technologies. He did the same with me. When he was sure I'm gonna be killed, he went to China to pattern the things in China I'm trying to save. Casimir battery, which doesn't have any meeting, but he wanted to control the Keshe Foundation by claiming it's his. Now you understand how we all been taken for a ride by a murderer, by a gangster, by a terrorist, and most of all by a pedophile. When a man writes, I piss you know, I piss there, and he writes his poet for it, when he has exposed himself to a boy of two and a half years old, it means you know what it is, because he only likes them when they're three years old. And you read, it was read to you, the girl killed was annually assaulted. He is not interested. Read about Adam Sterling. He's done the same thing with his own children, because they won't touch them in different way. They don't leave any evidence. So now you understand how we became criminal organization, how we became to run for our life in the hand of a criminal. What we want you to do is very simple. You listen to about an hour maybe of a story of life of a man. He set out to save humanity, but what I want to know is, we're opening two websites. Missingchildren.help and we would like you to tell us where do you know which children are gone missing, where and how. We know 
the type of children he likes. He likes blonde because he did both of his daughters. But he comes from Africa. He went to Africa to bring the name of people like Paul to put on his list. He was born in Kinshasa, but he's just born in Brussels. So what we want to know, if you know any scientists who have died mysteriously, we want to know. Send it to us. It goes straight away to CIA and other intelligence services. If you know any children gone missing around Belgium, France, Spain, Portugal, the English girl which went missing was sold by photograph by Hope. False Hope sold the picture. And the girl, you know, is a very well known on the, on the news. She is back in Morocco, escaping from the United States. And at the same time, is still trafficking children. So, ladies and gentlemen, Cash Foundation is solid. Ladies and gentlemen, you have seen how we work so openly. And ladies and gentlemen, you see him as a head of internet organization. So what you see is we have to protect our children. We are dealing with a man who has hypnotized his own daughters that they don't remember. If you read the judgment for Alan Sterling, they say the infants are so small that they cannot recognize, remember, but Mr. Sterling agrees that he's done the job because he would cover thousands of the others they have trafficked and they have murdered. We pass this information that he has been involved in the murder of the two Moroccan girls in Belgium, and we do not accept the police of Belgium to take any action, it will be done by international police. And as now, if you go back on the internet, false hope disappeared on the 30th of the month. She didn't put anything in her Facebook. That day, she was with the parliamentary committee crime squad of Morocco, ordered by the king of Morocco to investigate her activities. She is on a wing to be arrested once they complete their process, as we've seen with Alan Stedding. He was interviewed, released, till they find out more who she is communicating with, and she is done by the interview. She'll be in time escaping from America. We don't know how many American children she has murdered or sold on the internet through Alan Stedding. Susan is in the same game. That's why I asked from Mr. Amini, if it was his daughter, and we knew it's not, he said he knows he's one of the people, the team around him. And unfortunately, we have a very sad news to you. As you've seen, this guy is so low, and he sees we work without the borders and nations. In the last entries, he accuses me being of a child trafficking with one of the hard workers of the Cash Foundation in Germany that we are involved, that's why we are chasing him, because we are in it. No, because we were chasing you, we found out everything about you. My team, some 40 of them, are solid, loyal, and committed to freedom of humanity. But unfortunately, Red Circle is a murderer man who was killed very easily the first time. We don't know how many other scientists is killed. And we are looking for the name of the children who gone lost around Antwerp. This is his patch, where he takes children, hypnotizes them, rapes them, and then he enjoys to do what you read. So you understand, there was nothing wrong with a Dutch or Belgian politician. There was nothing wrong with the scientists who got murdered in Holland. There is nothing wrong with the scientists. We don't know if he's alive or dead. He has a Russian wife, he used to live in Antwerp, and he had to go to the coast because of the cancer. He was trying to survive, the same as me. 
we think he has given him the last portion to drink, most probably when he went for him to take a frequency measurement of the uh, nano material, because he brought that to me, he said, this is what is done. So he most probably, more probably, he was trying to save his life, to stay alive, we were told. So we have evidence for attempted murder and two murders of scientists. If the Dutch police stay silent, now that we have brought this on, there is something wrong in the structure of the security and the police of Holland. Don't forget, when they knew I'm not leaking any more information about the control of my system, the king of Belgium came to see me five years, four years ago in a cafe, begging literally from me, I'm going to kill you if you don't give me the technology. I told him, take a hike, I'm going. When I go, you go. I left here abducted. First time ever in the history of the kingship because the blood of the children, which are killed, 50 of them in France, most of it links to Red Circle. When the top man finishes with him, the crumbs are used to dispose of. The true is nothing but a cover-up for acts of Red Circle and his people. Don't give the pictures to no one on the internet. It's an illegal act for underage pictures to be taken or be requested to be taken in all the European countries. How come? On his website, he's asked for the children of three to six years old, specifically three to six years, and his daughter the same. They have orders. This is the type they like. We saw Alan Sterling, we see Red Circle, and we know his daughter has to follow father's order because otherwise he'll be exposed. So now you know all the facts about us. We all live in our closet. We all live with our lives. We all work to bring our children and family up. And lunatics like him disturb everything. The scientist died with the children. The other man with the children. I suffered so much with my family. The children who got beheaded like what you've seen. So, the circle, your circle is redded completely. You're a murderer, you are a thief, stealing scientist patents and pretending to be nothing. And at the same time, as I told you, we have asked the security services to join us the way we got Alan Sterling, we're gonna get you and your boss very easily. As you know, as part of our team sits security services because we bring them in to protect ourselves. All the detail has been passed on. Everything, every copy. And in a new website, which supporters have set up, we'll leave all the papers which we talked about today on it. You can go and read it. How he murdered a child. How he has patented dead man's patent. Have you ever seen a dead man walking? Yes, the man is dead. Red circle walking with his patent and then fighting with the others who stole with how much they're going to share out of it. So, very simple. We have given all the information to the Italian police and Italian court system. Now, we don't make accusation. This website will go up and our supporters will put out their website and you can read and please contact the Moroccan community and tell them we found the murder of your daughters. Because these two girls, in another part of his website, writes the ages he likes to have as it comes. Three, four, five, 11, 12. Have you ever seen anybody writing what ages he wants to have a picture of? We have taken a snapshot of his website. We have taken a snapshot of his daughter's Facebook is all there with their names on it. They cannot deny it. It's categorizing for customers. Now they're after three to six year old because the others after the theft of the girls in Belgium, remember children, young age don't remember and that's what it does to them. He beheads them. So I'm sorry to bring you to this. We are a scientific organization. You heard the story of my life and my family 
by accident, totally accident, trying to bring my technology to you lot to enjoy the micro units, the pen, the pads, the medical units, we have paid heavily for it. We do not get support from anyone. The foundation stands on its own. All the donations, if it's large, through his boss get stopped at the bank in Belgium. That we do not receive it, that they stop us. But thanks to you lot, understanding we are correct, supporting us to be there for you to support yourself and your family. Now, we are here with you. We share the knowledge and we'll take man to space as we promised. We have seen how the Africans with a pure heart bring the most beautiful solutions for cancer. We see how the Germans work to bring their factory into production and give the others. We've seen people like Richard move from Holland to Germany to set up a factory that he can help the others because he believes in it. And then we set him up to walk into the trap, which is red circle. You are on your own circle. You are a murderer. I'm ashamed to play eyes on you. And in so many ways, humanity is ashamed for your birth. You killed a scientist. You're involved in his murder. We know you're single-handedly involved twice in trying to murder me, plus on the street, blowing my car up and everything else. And strange enough, I tell you a story because it. I told you. When I came back before I arrived, go back on the history of the foundation, I mentioned this in some teachings. I called my wife securely to tell I'm coming back next Tuesday and Wednesday, whatever. And the same next day, that was 10 o'clock at night, Red Circle calls my wife and he says, he's been called by the office of the Prime Minister of Belgium that Mr. Cash, within 10 days from return from Iran, has to attend the office of the Prime Minister. We thought, yeah, my wife is there. Why do they need to call him? And we actually went to the office of Prime Minister because he wanted to show, I brought him back, now I kill him. Now you understand. It wasn't accidental. He made the decision to show how far he can go and who are his servants. We walked into the Office of Prime Minister of Belgium. We saw one of his paymasters, most probably. And then we seen it. I have to tell you something regarding the B. This Mr. B was in the Flemish Parliament, or assistant to the head of, as they call, chief of cabinet. And he was kicked out because of inappropriate actions, stealing the same as his subordinates. So this lot have a huge history of murdering, deception, and Red Circle sits on the top. What we see that he's a victim is a cry of the wolf. You have enough evidence. We put all this evidence on the internet. We see today people telling you they never, they never put a foot out. He's taken his name and it's all by him. To discredit. Now we have 650 non-victims and one real, real victim. The victim is humanity in the hand of the biggest murderer. He's a serial killer. We've seen them in the shape of doctors. We've seen them in the shape of policemen. We've seen them in every shape or form. Now we have shown you one of the most, what I call devious murderers, serial killers of children and scientists. So please go to him and mark yourself as another victim. We are human race victim in the hand of one of the biggest gangs, which part of them we exposed with Alan Sterling. The other part yesterday was exposed by the European police, Interpol, in the same countries as we said. And very strange, I have to tell you one thing I forgot. The gentleman he introduced to us with A, where did I put him? When you see his name, go, we had to do this. This is it's a piece we gave to the court of Belgium. At that time, I was very innocent. I didn't know. The A, which is part of this group, 
he is the closest friend to him. He was the one who financed, was supposed to finance the Keshe Foundation with no money apparently, but he had millions. And he's the same man who was supposed to be part of the finance of the Dutch, Belgium, Dutch scientists who died. He has been kicked out of Thailand for annually raping a 10-year-old boy. And the government of Belgium took him out. Two children were raped by him in Thailand. When you see his name, open it up, go back into Interpol report, you see him, it's on the internet. So these are a bunch of pedophiles gathering children, raping children, killing scientists for what it is. We are dealing with the most organized criminal organization in the Western Europe, headed by one man and never been uncovered. We covered Alan Sterling, we proven to be right, and my team will put red circle well circled in the coming days. We submit documents further to the CIA and the others that the Belgian police has no enforcement because this is an international crime. I'm Iranian, I ask for the Iranian government to take action. Dutch police has to look into this. The patterns have been taken to Australia. Australia police is involved. He has moved to China to patent. They will come in. We are very well known for what we do. He is well organized crimes and selling technologies which he has stolen. Always remember, how can you write a Kazmir patent, which is admitted he was going to do in China, when you are, sorry, a cubely happy pattern writer, toys and dildos. That's all he does. That's how his intelligence is, stealing technology. And how can you be a partner in the most advanced compression technology in Australia because you knew in Europe you're gonna be caught for murdering a scientist. All the details are on the internet. We handed over everything to CIA, and now we hand everything to Interpol, which has gone through, and every embassy, every country should know that their scientists are in danger, and the children will be murdered by his organization. Red Circle, you are a shame to breathe the air of this planet. This planet is beautiful, is one of the most special places in the universe, and you have dirtied it with your breath. The foot you put on it, I wish your mother would have never given birth to you that you caused so much pain for so many people. Thank you very much for today. Go on the Cash Foundation website, Start learning how to make these systems and help the humanity like the rest of us. There is nothing wrong with your knowledge. There are no victims. There are people who try to make victims because when you become a victim, they get the address of your children and you really become victims. That's why they've been going around calling the child of Alex. That's why they've been going around calling the one of the teachers that they're gonna do this and that to his children. That's why we receive calls. They threaten always with the children because this is the way they are. They have no problem. We are dealing with a murderer. I will speak with the Imam of Belgium. I will let them know that where they can find the grave we know the murderer lives. He is so low that this is the pattern. He brought the Africans to put on his victim list on his new outlet. He says that I'm a child trafficker with another Iranian because again, foreigners, they are doing it, not us diverting attention. But in fact, that's what he does. My team is solid. We are perfect people. We support humanity. But one thing, tell your young daughter that we'll make her face the face of child abuse across the world. You try to stop it. That face is not innocent. It's another one helping you to get children. I put that face 
all over the internet, plus your grandchildren, which I think you must have read both of them. This is your habit. That's why when I was in your house, I noticed your children don't let you anywhere. You just sit as a grandpa in one corner. They won't let you touch because you might touch more than yourself are allowed to. They did with your own daughters. It's not theory, it's fact. We read it, we've seen it, and you admitted it. Exposure to two and a half year old child pissing in front of him is an illegal act in the house when it's you and the child alone. Thank you very much for today. We come back next week. We bring hope, prosperity, and peace to humanity. But we had to wait till we had Mr. Sterling in the cage that we could defend ourselves. And you've seen it. We have nothing to hide. You have nothing to hide. Teach, and let's bring peace to all of us. Thank you very much for today. Thank you, Mr. Cash. Thank you. OK, that brings to the to close the 120th Knowledge Seekers Workshop of the Keshe Foundation Spaceship Institute for Thursday, June uh, 30th, 2016. And as always, thank you everybody for attending and uh, um, stay tuned next week for more uh, exciting news from the Keshe Foundation on all fronts. Okay. That's it for now. I'll shut the live stream. And we'll end the meeting. Okay.